Good morning. My name is Alex Sains and I'm speaking to you from Avon Valley Churches, a group of seven churches on the northwestern edge of the New Forest in Hampshire. Well, we are nearly at the end of 2020 and what a year it's been. This morning, I would like to spend some time thinking about how we've coped and are still trying to cope with how difficult it's been. So my 2020 started well. My New Year's resolution was to be receptive. I felt I wanted to be uh, more receptive to opening myself up to God, more attentive to listening to him and receiving from him. It was a vague idea, uh, which was quite different from my normal New Year's resolution lists. Um, you know, run 10K, improve my work-life balance, give up midweek drinking, you know the kind of thing but it felt right. So I wrote in my journal, 2020 receptive. And then because it looked a bit bare, I drew a nice uh, swirly line around it. <laughs> and then COVID happened. And I was thrown into one of the most difficult years of my life. But of course, I was certainly not alone. The, ro the world around me was also having a difficult year. 2020 will certainly go down in history, and we have just lived through it. We will all have a story to tell, and many of us will talk about the difficulties we've had to endure. Some of us worked non-stop during the year to care for vulnerable or sick people. The relentless working may be to make a business survive, or the stress of getting a business COVID secure, the management of stress in others around us and the resulting tiredness and stress in ourselves. While some of us had to endure incredible loneliness and isolation, being apart from loved ones, the lack of human contact, the lack of communication, the lack of church. And some of us had to endure the loss of a loved one and then experience grief in a way that was so much more isolating and therefore so much harder. And there, throughout the year, I was looking at my New Year's resolution word, receptive. Now, as I said, I started the year pretty positive. And so the first thing you'll see in my journal for 2020 is something that I had taken from a reading in Jesus Calling. It's based on a few verses from 2 Corinthians and Psalm 73, and it's written as if Jesus is talking to you. So I wrote, you are being transformed from the inside out. As you keep your focus on me, I form you into the one I desire you to be. Your part is to yield to my creative work in you, neither resisting it nor trying to speed it up. Enjoy the tempo of a God-breathed life by letting me set the pace. Hold my hand in childlike trust and the way before you will open up step by step. I love that image of allowing God to set the pace and the way before me opening up step by step. But in the middle of difficult times, it can be difficult to do this. I have to say that even though I tried to keep my New Year's resolution at times, the stress I was under it was made it difficult. As Christians, we know we're not promised an easy time. And in fact, we should expect to sometimes have to live through very difficult times. But how should we respond to such difficult times as Christians? What can we do to help us through them? Well, one week I was having a particularly difficult time and I read something that seemed to be helpful. So I gave it a go uh, and it did help me. So I thought I would share it with you this morning. I read that when we're having a difficult time, there are three things that we can do that will help to give us confidence to know that we can cope with the difficult days, weeks and years we're living through. Firstly, we should focus on our relationship with God. Secondly, we should remember the promises in the Bible. And thirdly, we can try to remember previous difficult times and how we were helped through them. So how could these three things 
work to help us through a difficult period. Let's take each one and I'll tell you how I use them to help me. So the first one is to focus on our relationship with God. Well, that certainly seems a, a good place to start, especially when we're struggling with life. So what can we do practically to, to, to help us with our relationship with God? Well, all relationships start and grow with effective communication and our relationship with God should not be any different. And communication involves both talking and listening. Relationships also need appreciation of the other person. So we also need to remember to worship and be thankful regardless of our situation. So those three key words are helpful to focus on. Talking, listening and thanking. So many a morning during this year, I've woken early and forced myself to do my quiet time. I read my daily reading from Jesus Calling. I share a, a little nugget from it uh, with a couple of friends over WhatsApp and then I try to pray. I use a structure that I heard Gary talk about once. I try to start by finding something to thank God for. My house, my sleep, the trees outside, my animals, anything to get the conversation going. I then say sorry, usually for my lack of focus or my brain, which is also trying to sort out a problem. I then focus on a few people to pray for. I then pray for myself and my day ahead of me. And finally, I try to listen. Now, I know that makes it sound easy and of course it's not. How many times have I cut it short because I received a text or remembered an email I had to send? But even when I've really struggled with my days and my health, even on those days when emotionally I have felt nothing towards God, I have tried to give him a few minutes of my time before I start my day. And to keep looking at that word receptive in my journal. I once read uh, that God wants us to be real with him. He wants to hear the cry of our heart and this will help us to draw close to him. And that does help me when I'm having a difficult day. I can say, oh God, I'm so fed up. Where are you in all of this? And do you know what? Amongst my difficult year, I have been amazed some days at the answers to prayers. Some slowly but surely being answered in front of me over a period of weeks or months. And some sudden moments of clarity that could only be explained by the fact that I had prayed about a specific issue that morning. One was an answer to a very practical problem at work, which was a light bulb moment. And I was able to go into work and say, guess what? I've had an idea. And then when my colleague jumped up and down with excitement, I was able to say, actually, I prayed about that this morning. So I think I have to give God some of the credit for that. So certainly focusing on our relationship with God is a good starting point, especially on difficult days. Secondly, we can look at the promises in the Bible. When I'm having a difficult day, I certainly can find comfort in the Bible. When I became a Christian, the verse that meant most to me was the one in Jeremiah 29 that says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I, mem I memorised that one so that I can say it whenever I need to remind myself. But there is so much to take comfort from in the Bible. The Psalms are a great place to start when you're having a bad day. But we can also go to the New Testament and look at what Jesus had to say. In John's Gospel, we hear Jesus saying, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And then, do not let your hearts be troubled. And in Matthew, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. So on those days when I'm struggling, when the words don't seem to come and emotionally I may, I may feel empty, I have a book where I've written down some of my favourite Bible verses so I can pick it up and read a couple. And sometimes just focusing on one or two can help me get myself out of bed and start the day. Then finally, 
reflecting on past experiences. You know, I wasn't sure about this one at first because being the slightly stubborn person I am, I thought that I would think, well, that was then and this is now. How's that going to help? But when I made myself do it, it did make me think about times when I have survived better than I thought I would. And then I was able to use that memory to reassure myself that I will get through this time. I will get through this year. And at some point, I'm sure I will look back at the blessings that this that have come out of 2020, just like I can look back at previous times and say, that was a hard time. But do you know what? An amazing thing happened. Or I felt God's love in that moment. Or even who'd have thought that would happen then? So as we come to the end of a year that has left its mark on all of us, it's left us bruised, unwell, stressed, weary. Let us take some time to stop, to cry, to listen and to gain confidence from the knowledge that we are not alone. I'd like to lead you in a period of reflection now. Uh, so please get yourself comfortable. Um, either close your eyes or use the images I've chosen to help you focus. Be still and know that I am God. Still my mind. Help me to be still. To let go of my worries so that I can receive your peace. I am aware of my breathing, slowly in and out. As I breathe in, I breathe in the aroma of God, his love, his peace. And as I breathe out, I let go of my worries. I let my shoulders go down a bit more and I relax into my chair. I let it take my weight. Help me to relax into your healing, holy presence. Open my heart to receive your love. Thank you. Thank you for your presence here with me now. For your love for me and for all that you are doing in my life and in the world around me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the times that I have sinned or chosen the wrong path. I pray for others, for those people in my life who are on my heart this morning. And I pray for myself. Heavenly Father, it has been a difficult time. I come to you bruised, in need of healing. Help me to walk with you today, to open my ears to listen to your voice, to equip me for whatever difficulties I will encounter today, and to live the day you want me to live. I seek your face, Lord, while I listen to your words. Be still and know that I am God. Call on me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. My eyes are fixed on you, Sovereign Lord. In you I take refuge. For I am the Lord your God, 
who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Be still and know that I am God. I remember a time when I have felt your presence or your guiding hand, and I thank you now for that memory. I thank you for the knowledge that you love me and you are here with me now. I thank you for this year and the years to come. Help me to walk with you today, to be receptive to you, to be attentive to you in all my moments and to immerse myself in your loving presence, today and tomorrow, this year and the next, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>